Hello, Internet, and welcome back. Ah, that sound really kind of rough, isn't it? Hey, everybody, welcome back to yet another video. My name is Mark. If you don't know me already, I'm a student studying computer science and language in mind at NYU with a minor in game design. And today I wanted to talk about something that was like morning routine-esque. Now, it's not about waking up early. It's about waking up consistently on time, feeling more rested in a way. For this semester, I wanted to start waking up at 6.45, which I mentioned in uh, this video here, quick two minute morning routine, if you're curious about what I do. And it just wasn't going well. I kept waking up, hitting snooze or setting another alarm for another 30 minutes or 40 minutes and then going back to sleep and it just felt crappy and so I said you know what let's change from 6 30 back to 7 15 and it's been much better I've been staying up much more consistently one thing I always hear from people is how they always set multiple alarms they want to wake up at 7 but then they set one for 7 7 15 7 30 sometimes every five minutes today I want to touch upon one why that can be bad for you both in terms of your sleep quality and just general habit performance throughout the rest of your day and then I wanted to touch upon how you can set a consistent time and why you should set a consistent time to wake up I'm not gonna be saying you need to get up at 4 a.m. or even 7 a.m. if you want to get up at 1 p.m. that's fine all you have to do is be consistent so let's jump into point number one the first thing I want to say is to just let yourself sleep in the moment you set five alarms one alarm for seven one alarm for 705 one for all the way up until 8 a.m. because your class is at 805 and you're already giving yourself permission to hit snooze or hit stop on the alarm when you set all of these alarms because you know you have a class at 8 a.m. you want to get up at seven but you set one for every five minutes just in case you're already giving yourself permission to get up by that last alarm in other words you set an alarm for seven but you're so scared you might sleep through it that you set a new one and you might miss class why not just set that last alarm if you're already thinking oh I'm gonna wake up at 7 45 to make it to my class at 8 just keep it that last alarm because if you wake up at 7 and then keep trying to fall back asleep for five minute or ten minute intervals your quality of sleep is gonna be really really bad and in my experience and from the basic articles I've read and some things in the description down below of course you're never gonna get into a more restful state of sleep in those five minute intervals as you might with another half an hour of sleep even then it's a little iffy but my point is is if you're already setting 10 alarms, just set one alarm that goes off at the latest time. If you really want to get up early, then start at the latest time and slowly work your way back. I understand why people will set five alarms between 7 and 7.30. But the thing is, by setting all those alarms, we're already giving ourselves permission to sleep in. Sure, this is a why not just set the last one up. It's more of a be okay with waking up for that last one. That's the last possible moment you can wake up, right? You may as well make the sleep before that the best quality that you can. By setting multiple alarms, we're already ruining our rhythm. We're already saying, yeah, you can snooze multiple times after you wake up. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you can relate with the feeling that I feel of you know what? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up at 6:45 tomorrow, and then you wake up, and then your morning head is like, ho ho ho. No, you are not, my friend. And we're powerless to stay up and stick it out. Set that final alarm, and if you have a reason to get up, you have a reason to stay up. You have something that can fight that morning fog and say, no, 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 I gotta be at class by eight. I gotta catch that train that's leaving in like five minutes. Hopefully it's not five minutes, but you get what I mean. Now, one recommendation I have for this is get a cheap physical alarm that's not your phone. You can only set three alarms usually, maximum on them, but just set one. Set it and put it across from your room. I've heard this tip all the time and would highly recommend it. It gets you up it gets you walking somewhere and drink some water get your body just going that is my own recipe I guess to waking up if you're tired enough if I wake up at 4 a.m. I'm not gonna stay up if I set my alarm off and then drink some water maybe if I went to bed at 7 p.m. sure but I don't but if you get up at this intended time you walk across the room for me it's like four steps you drink a little water and you're good to go now point number two is that it's not better than snoozing snoozing your alarm and setting multiple alarms have very similar problems but they are not exactly the same now, as I just mentioned, when you set five alarms, you're already telling yourself, I might not, you know, wake up for all of these. When you set one alarm, you don't know if you're gonna snooze. Maybe you will snooze five or 10 times, but it's this idea of not setting multiple alarms the night before. And that is the idea, the main difference that I think lies between setting multiple alarms and snoozing your alarm. You set multiple alarms, five or 10 alarms versus setting one alarm that you might snooze. But staying up on your first try can be one of the best motivators for the rest of your day because you've just done one thing first try. The thing with this idea of setting multiple alarms is that it's procrastinating your wake up time. When you wake up, you're immediately saying, no, I'll wake up in five more minutes. Not only is it procrastinating your wake up time, but the night before you've already said, I'm going to procrastinate my wake up time. This habit of 
mentally preparing yourself for things you've already pushed back that doesn't show up in a snooze button per se is something that'll spread to other parts of your day. Oh, I'll start this in five minutes. Oh, I'll start this in five minutes. Obviously, they're not directly related, but from other videos I've seen it in my own experience, they are directly correlated. Waking up consistently, whether or not it's early, was one of the best habits because I believe that it spread into so many other parts of my life. One of the big things is that if you create a consistent wake up time, you can create a consistent bedtime. Now I'm gonna talk about how creating a wake up time will spread into everything else in just a minute with point number three, but I wanna quickly say a last note on this habit. Habits are very difficult, especially if they are new habits. With this wake up time, it's fairly easy and straightforward to implement. It doesn't take any time out of my day and not setting five different alarms and just keeping that last one improves the quality of my sleep. I can track my wake-up habits over time, simply journaling when I get up at what time, or using some app, whether that be something as complex as Fitbit or just some simple sleep logging app to track my wake-up time over time. That was a weird sentence. The third thing is that it has a long-term goal. Habits are really hard to create in general, but if they are easy to implement, easy to track, and they have a an end goal, an end purpose, I believe it makes them a bit easier to follow. Not easier in the sense of less difficult, but just more straightforward, less tedious. Waking up is very simply a measurable habit that has long-term positive effects that you can work on literally every single day. Now, if you do make a consistent wake up time, there's a problem and that is that you have to go to bed consistently as well. For example, if I wanna wake up at 7.15, I need about seven and a half hours of sleep per night. That's my own personal measurement. So I need to be asleep by around 11.30, which means I need to be in bed by 10.45, 11. Consistent wake up time over time leads me to falling asleep faster. Some nights I still won't fall asleep for a while, but it's important that you don't check your phone. Blah, 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 blah. That's for another video or many resources on why you shouldn't look at your screens at night. I wanna talk about the consistent bedtime. Now, this brings us to point number three, and that is to make your wake up time a non-negotiable habit. That when you wake up at 4 a.m. or 9 a.m. or 12 p.m. or 3 p.m., you say that when I wake up, I am staying up. Some people are night owls, hence this wake up at 3 p.m., right? The most difficult part is that if I set a time like 7.15, but then I go to bed at 12, well, I probably won't fall asleep until around one, and that's only about six hours of sleep, and that's not, I can operate on that, but if I wake up at 7.15, I am gonna be totally tired. And that's where the non-negotiable thing comes in. Totally tired, Mark? Well, you said you were gonna stay up at 7.15. Let's hop in the shower so we don't get tempted to go back to bed. Let's go make breakfast so we're not tempted. Let's drink a whole liter of water before you go back to bed. And by the time I'm done with that liter of water, chances are I'm either feeling too sick, I need to pee, or I'm just awake at that point. All in all, if you're waking up at 7.15 and you go to bed at 3 a.m., wake up at 7.15 anyway. The consistent time thing can mess us up. For me, I rely on a lot of scheduling. I rely on myself to at least be somewhat awake by 9 a.m. so I can do the first thing I wanna do in the day. You have to find a way to tell yourself it's unacceptable to wake up not at this time. Throughout the day, take some naps if you have to. I often take like a nap or two at least every other day, and it's really important that you get the sleep, but you gotta make your wake up time consistent. And as you make it more consistent, you will find yourself growing tired at night, or at least growing tired at the time that your body wants to go to sleep. This in itself is difficult because you are fighting yourself. Your willpower is fighting your biology, and your biology has the power of your current habits going on. Staying up to whatever, procrastinating to whatever, waiting until whatever comes along and says you need to stay up and finish this now, and your willpower, which is... Uh... Depends. <laughs> There's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot that goes on with the willpower. So this is not a necessarily easy thing to do. I know that I, I created a non-negotiable habit because I made things rely on me waking up early when I started this thing in the fall of 2019. If I don't wake up early, I'd miss boxing. If I miss boxing, then that ruined the rest of my other goals. Last few weeks have been a bit rocky because I haven't had a strong purpose, but I encourage you to dig deep and find your own. Whether it's to improve the quality of your life or very specifically, you know, journal every morning. If you need to, create something every morning like a, a something that will keep you accountable, that if you miss, it's somewhat of a punishment, but not the end of the world. Kind of like a class. If you miss one class, not the end of the world, you kind of double down on your habit. If you're someone who has an inconsistent sleep schedule and that works for you or whatever you do for sleep and you're not feeling tired throughout the day or whatever, then fine, power to you. 
you know, keep on going through. But if you're on this video, part of me imagines you must have clicked for some reason, and that might be, I want to change my sleep schedule. And this whole video is an accumulation of my thoughts over the past few weeks as I have been debating with this wake up time and how best to deal with it. All in all, set a time like 8 a.m., see if you can meet it for a week. It's a difficult habit to form. I'm not going to lie. It's going to take willpower. But once you get it, once you don't start sleeping in 10 times every single morning, if you create a consistent wake up time for yourself, it's a habit that will spread into the rest of your life, whether that be punctuality or just willpower and conviction to sit down and commit to doing something when you say you're going to do it. Waking up is just a really good stomping ground or ground zero for you testing this, I guess, willpower or ability to commit to a time. This video feels like a bit of a mess. I did not follow the script as closely as I usually do for videos like this. So definitely leave a comment down below if you have any questions or let me know what your goal is. Come back in a week or two, update me on your status. You can also join our Discord. You know, maybe there's a few of you out there. You wanna join the Discord? We can all do this as a squad. Keep ourselves accountable for whatever wake up times we set for ourselves because social accountability is, as always, very, very important. Yeah, so thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. If that subscribe button's red, just go ahead and make it gray for me if you wouldn't mind. Don't forget to leave a comment, maybe join the Discord, and as always, don't forget to stay awesome. Have a good one. See you next week.